Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stu again, and this time we're going to explore Southwest High Speed Rail. Southwest High Speed Rail is a concept that has been put forth lately by California High Speed Rail officials to connect four separate projects and provide fast train service between San Francisco, California and Las Vegas, Nevada via California's high desert. It's audacious, it's bold, let's check it out. We're going to start in the Las Vegas area at Brightline West's future Las Vegas area station. This is located at Interstate 15, Blue Diamond Road and Las Vegas Boulevard, about two and a half miles south of the Mandalay Bay Resort and the far south end of the Strip. This is technically not Las Vegas. The site is in the unincorporated area of Enterprise, Nevada, home to about a quarter million people. That is within the Las Vegas metro area, population 2.4 million. Brightline West will travel next to Interstate 15 for five miles to get out of the Las Vegas area before transitioning into the Interstate 15 median in Sloan, Nevada, where it will stay for 210 of the remaining 212 miles to Rancho Cucamonga. Brightline West has been ready to start heavy construction any day now for a year. The current company line is late summer, early fall of this year. If and when it starts, the first sign of that construction will likely be in Sloan. A large part of the Brightline West route will be in the desert where they could face a temperature range as broad as high-speed rail in Saudi Arabia. There will be additional challenges like three steep mountain passes, Mountain Pass, California will be the highest point on the line, rising to 4,730 feet just south of the California-Nevada border. Brightline West will not employ any tunneling, so these mountain passes will present extreme challenges related to grade. Grade is the inclination of a route measured in rise over run. The current steepest high-speed rail line is in Germany with a maximum grade of 4%. This is four feet of rise over 100 feet of run. Brightline West will approach 4% in several places and exceed it in a few. Brightline West hopes to conquer some of those engineering challenges by leaning on train set technology. Brightline West will employ the American Pioneer 220 train set, which will be an advanced iteration of the Siemens Valaro high-speed train sets used in Germany. Being constrained to the freeway median, the train could travel as slowly as 60 miles per hour in spots and as fast as 185 miles per hour in others. Tracks will mostly be near ground level, but the crossing of the Mojave River in Barstow will be on a spectacular viaduct, which will need to rise 60 or 70 feet above ground level over BNSF's Southern Transcon route and Main Street. After 169 miles, that extreme route will reach the Victor Valley Station on the far north end of Apple Valley, about seven miles north of Victorville. According to Brightline West, a trip would take 90 minutes from Las Vegas. Brightline West would then proceed another 49 miles in a southern direction down Cajon Pass to wind up at Rancho Cucamonga, about 40 miles east of Los Angeles. A Brightline West train would take about another 40 minutes to reach Rancho Cucamonga from Victor Valley. Brightline West is currently planned to cost $12.4 billion with operations planned to start within four years of the start of construction. For each of these parts, I have a more in-depth video. For Brightline West, I recommend this one. It's the most up-to-date link in the card and description. In the Southwest High Speed Rail scheme of things, at Victor Valley, Brightline West would meet up with the High Desert Corridor. This is an initiative mainly by Los Angeles County to build a 54 mile long high speed rail connection between Brightline West and Palmdale, where it would meet California High Speed Rail. The connection of Brightline West and the High Desert Corridor at Victor Valley would be phased with a separate platform for a separate High Desert Corridor track at the Victor Valley Station. That would initially require a transfer. The second phase would add a switch slightly north of the station that would allow trains to switch from Brightline West to High Desert Corridor tracks to continue on to the west on the HDC. 
The High Desert Corridor's largest natural obstacle is the Mojave River Gorge, which will be traversed with a large bridge, according to early conceptual art. This would instantly be the most recognizable piece of infrastructure in the entire California desert. Aside from a few miles on the ends, the HDC mainly moves through open desert, curving to avoid any civilization it might encounter. The journey from Victor Valley to Palmdale is supposed to take 30 minutes or less, rendering a Las Vegas to Palmdale time of 2 hours and Rancho Cucamonga to Palmdale in about 90 minutes. There is no current train service for the former pair. For the latter, it's currently about three and a half hours between the two. The HDC is expected to cost somewhere around six or seven billion dollars and is still early in the process. Check out my HDC video for more visuals and analysis of the planned route. Palmdale is the least clear part of the entire Southwest high-speed rail scheme. A Palmdale high-speed rail station will consume a 120-acre chunk of the center of the city. This would be a huge station. For comparison, the Bakersfield, California high-speed rail station site is quite large, and it's only half as much land. Early California high-speed rail concepts had a Y north of the station that would have allowed trains to skip Palmdale, but new ones do not. This may mean a similar situation to Victor Valley, where either a transfer from dedicated platforms would be necessary, or through trains would stop and then continue on in reverse. It's also worth noting that regardless of configuration, Southwest High Speed Rail would connect to Metrolink's Antelope Valley Line, which would enable a transfer to LA Union Station. Another issue here is interoperability of train sets. Brightline West has chosen a wide variant of the American Pioneer 220 that would be 4 to 8 inches wider than a typical US passenger train. This will affect things like distance between track center lines and distance from track center line to platforms. There are simple ways for narrower trains to adjust to wider standards using technology. Wider trains need to be accommodated by standards. Industry scuttlebutt is that California High Speed Rail might choose a narrower train. It is a developing situation. The reality of how it will all work out should come to light by the end of 2025. At Palmdale, we transition to the California High Speed Rail project and the approach is much different. Brightline West is a private project that adheres to Interstate 15 to save money, but that comes at a speed penalty. The HDC is short mostly in LA County and runs through fairly empty desert connecting two stations controlled by other agencies. California High Speed Rail is a statewide initiative to build an 800 mile high speed rail system as far south as San Diego and as far north as Sacramento. Stations will mostly be in the middle of cities, sometimes with large impacts like at Palmdale. The pertinent part of California High Speed Rail for the Southwest High Speed Rail concept is about 325 miles of the route from Palmdale to Gilroy. If you're not from California, you likely don't know your Gilroy from your Palmdale, so let's have a geography lesson. This is the world. This is the United States of America. This is the state of California. California's largest metropolitan areas are as follows. Los Angeles, the Inland Empire, San Francisco, Oakland, San Diego, Sacramento, San Jose, Fresno. Palmdale is a city of 175,000. It is part of the LA metro area, but is located in the desert 30 miles from Los Angeles. The two are separated by the San Gabriel Mountains. Gilroy has a population of 60,000. It is in the San Jose metro area, about 30 miles south of San Jose, near the southern end of the Santa Clara Valley. Between Gilroy and Palmdale are the San Joaquin Valley portion of California's Central Valley and, importantly, two mountain ranges. The first of those out of Palmdale to the north is the Tehachapi Mountains. There, the route will also cross the Garlock Fault. 
That is a major earthquake fault, so the authority will cross that above ground here in Oak Creek Canyon between two tunnels and amongst the windmills. Beyond that, the route will have to descend about 3,200 feet over 22 miles from Tehachapi to the San Joaquin Valley floor, which works out to a 2% grade most of the way. They will accomplish that in areas like this with a series of tunnels and sizable hillside cuts. It's a challenge, but nothing insurmountable. The route will cross through Bakersfield on a high viaduct, cutting a block-wide swath through a big chunk of the city before stopping at a station site a mile north of downtown Bakersfield. Unlike Brightline West, California High Speed Rail will be built for pure speed outside of the LA Basin and the Santa Clara Valley, traveling between 180 and 220 miles per hour. Most of the time, it isn't entering or leaving a station. Because of that, despite it being over 80 miles from Palmdale to Bakersfield, California High Speed Rail will likely cover the distance in 30 minutes or less. Assuming a transfer in Palmdale, that would result in travel times of Bakersfield to Las Vegas in about three hours. Bakersfield to Rancho Cucamonga would be around two and a half hours. And Bakersfield to LA Union would be about three hours. Those times would be pretty competitive with driving, and none of these connections currently exist by train. North of Bakersfield, the California High-Speed Rail route weaves mostly through farmland for 110 miles before reaching Fresno, which you'll recall is California's seventh largest metro area at just over a million people. Again, the train is planned to be very fast here, and I think a non-stop between Bakersfield and Fresno could make it in about 40 minutes. That gives us roughly 3 hours 45 minutes to reach Los Angeles or Las Vegas from Fresno. Driving is about the same to LA, Southwest High Speed Rail would get you to Vegas 2 hours faster than driving. It's worth mentioning at this point that California High Speed Rail is currently under construction in this area. The first 119 miles of right-of-way track and systems should be completed by 2029. Extensions to the cities of Bakersfield and Merced would follow, forming an initial operating segment. After that, work would begin on extending the system south to Palmdale and west to Gilroy. The initial operating segment is scheduled to be running by 2033, but that segment is also currently $7 to $10 billion underfunded. For more information on the project, check out my video where I recently drove, droned, and documented the 171 miles of the initial operating segment. Just north of Fresno, the California High-Speed Rail route would curve to the west and cross the entire width of the San Joaquin Valley. 80 miles later, it would reach the Diablo Range, Southwest High-Speed Rail's second set of mountains. Crossing these will require two tunnels, one of which would need to be 13 miles long around the San Luis Reservoir. That emerges in the Pacheco Pass and then enters the second shorter tunnel to get to the Santa Clara Valley and Gilroy. This section would also be very fast, covering the roughly 115 miles in about 45 minutes. In terms of funding, there is no money for extensions to Gilroy and Palmdale, which are projected to cost at least $23 billion. A small amount may be coming in the California state budget that's being worked on as of the publishing of this video. The California High Speed Rail Authority's hope is that guarantees by the state will make private investors feel more secure and that they will help get Gilroy and Palmdale done. The authority would like to accomplish that by 2045. I would graciously call that optimistic, but we'll see. Gilroy is another unclear node of Southwest High Speed Rail at this point. Caltrain would be the connection or mode here, but there is more than one possibility of how that would work. The simplest would be a transfer to current Caltrain service, which is diesel electric from Gilroy to San Jose and electric from San Jose to San Francisco. With the transfer at San Jose, this takes two hours as a local from Gilroy to San Francisco. That would be more like 90 minutes as an express. Another possibility is Caltrain running battery versions of its electric Stadler KISS sets down to Gilroy, 
this could save five minutes or so. Another possibility would be Caltrain electrification down to Gilroy, which could possibly allow for a limited amount of California high-speed rail trains to run all the way to San Francisco in about an hour. I will go with electrification, a transfer at Gilroy, and 90 minutes. This would render a San Francisco to Las Vegas time of about six hours. That's three and a half hours faster than driving, three and a half hours slower than flying. San Jose to Los Angeles at five and a half hours would be faster than driving, and four and a half hours faster than Amtrak's Coast Starlight, which is the current rail connection. Flying is no comparison, you need the promised 2 hours 10 minutes of a completed California High Speed Rail Phase 1 for that. Caltrain recently finished electrification between San Francisco and San Jose at a cost of $2.4 billion. The California High Speed Rail Authority puts the cost of its plans between Gilroy and San Jose at $6 billion. To get a better idea of what Gilroy to San Francisco is like and to see Caltrain in action, check out this video. All of this would result in a rail network of over 600 miles, most of it high speed. Estimated cost is $80 billion. About $17 billion of that has been constructed already. Identified funding totals about $38 billion through 2030. The goal is to raise $42 billion, build the rest within 20 years, and have trains running end-to-end -end in 6 hours or less, possibly with one train, possibly with as many as 4 transfers. Is it likely, or is it pie in the sky? Let me know in the comments. There are ideas of expanding this even further, but who knows when that could possibly happen. Gone before. One more video coming up based on the footage I gathered on my Central Valley trip. This time we'll discuss developments on the Anaheim to Bakersfield portion of California High Speed Rail. A more in-depth look at that routing and how that part relates to Southwest High Speed Rail. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway!